Welcome to the third in the series of Data Uncovered, where we look at how data is shaping the real estate and real assets sector. I'm joined today by Sri Ramachandra, who's founder and president of Entrust Infotech. Thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure. It would be good to start just with AI and generative AI. What's your take there? As you know, AI has been in uh, existence for over seven to eight years time period. It has been used in different forms. So you have the different flavors of AI, like the national language processing, which is used for translations and any of the text studies and all those areas. And the typical AI solution works on a smaller data set, and it is used in terms of predictive analysis and the decision-making process. What happens in generative AI is, now it is working on a larger data model. And generative AI can now create contents, can create contents from the data sets from how it is being trained. You teach it English, then it can write poems. You give some instructions, it can give you know, pictures and videos and all the stuff. That is what the generative AI is. It is now taking to the next level, not just answering questions based on the existing contents. And there's a lot of discussion around this area, Sri. What are some of the common myths, particularly looking at, at AI in business? People think that if it's AI solution, that means it is 100% right. That is not true. AI can be wrong. AI is nothing but how we have trained it, what it has learned from, from there it is going to be giving you the responses. If it is not trained right, if it is, it is given wrong set of data, that is what it is going to come back and respond to. And the second myth, is AI can make people lose jobs. That is not true. AI is going to definitely help people. Generative AI is going to do is, it is going to probably take you be 30 to 30 to 40 percent efficient in what you are doing so that there is going to give you options to work on something else. But it is not necessarily going to take away the entire job from humans. So the human in the loop is going to be critical, but it is going to be assisted by AI on that particular front. And the third myth I would say is, people think that, oh, AI is too expensive, it's only for big business. AI can be used in small business also, and it actually, it gives you a lot more value for small businesses. And Sri, how do you see, you know, the potential challenges, but also ethical considerations when we're looking at, at AI, particularly in, in business processes? There are a lot of challenges uh, that are there uh, in the generative AI space. One, uh, the data quality. You need to have a bigger data set for AI to be effective. It all depends on what data that you are feeding into the system for it to be uh, giving you the right responses out there. Managing the data quality is going to be very critical. The other challenge is the cost, the infrastructure. AI is not cheap. Uh, it needs a lot of machine power to process and all the stuff, so it can become expensive. So you need to be a little bit more prudent to see how well you're going to be managing between the infrastructure that you're going to be putting in to building it versus what benefits that you want to get. And an ethical factor, the critical thing is transparency and accountability. Companies have to disclose to see which portion of it is AI generated. Only then people will be able to trust on that AI aspect. People are going to make decisions based on AI, so people should be accountable. And other thing is on the privacy. In AI, for a good AI to work, you need a lot of data. When you're trying to put in a lot of data, you need to make sure that none of the personal information and other things are getting exposed. People have to be very ethical to say, what kind of data is being fed? Because once it is fed, it is going to be there forever. And Sri, given your global role, are you seeing different, I suppose, use cases, but also perceptions of AI and generative AI between North America, Europe and, and Asia? Absolutely, we could see that one because we deal with customers across the globe. And when it comes to North America, the focus is more on innovation. Even in smaller organizations, everybody wants to see what is it that they can do with AI. And as a result, people are ready to explore how they can use AI in their business operations out there. When we see Asia, we see that there's a lot of government push on the AI front. They wanted to see how they can take advantage of AI people can easily cut across red tape to implement different kind of AI solutions. What we see in Europe that is very interesting here, consideration is more on uh, the ethical factors of AI, how it can be affecting the humans, ethics, transparency, 
GDPR compliance and all those factors, they want to make sure that they draw the framework very well before they start implementing things. But each one is learning from the other. The way I see it is, and North America is now learning from the ethical constraints that Europe is educating people to say how well that can be incorporated. We see that with the many of our clients where we have done the proof of concept in all those areas, even before they could roll it in, they want to make sure that these things are also being addressed on that particular aspect. And you mentioned innovation, Sri. So how has AI influenced both innovation but also creativity when we're looking at your business? On the interest side, what we do is Whenever we have a new problem, uh, when a customer or a new solution comes in, first we have to see how well we can address that using AI. And the creativity across the company, okay, we are making everybody think to see how well they can try to use AI either in their day-to-day -day work or on their personal work or on their hobbies or any of those areas. We want to see how people can be very creative on that particular front. The need to come up with innovative solutions is building up from our customers also. So it is creating a lot of interest. People are coming back and asking, show us how you are using this. So we have brought in a lot of new features in our software product, like the Ask Me and Lease AI. And we could see, previously we used to deal with, say within an organization, 30, 40 people out there. Now they are thrown open to the entire organization. Now we could see 600 people within a client using our software and each one coming up with, how can I use Alizi A and this, how can I use Ask Me on this one? So the uh, creativity is uh, definitely growing very well. And Sri, in what ways can um, generative AI help customer experience, but also engagement in a business setting? Previously, what happened when somebody have a problem, they have to run a lot of reports or they have to go to subject matter experts to get the responses, then process it and start working on that particular front. Now what is happening is, with these features that are available, they can ask their intuitive questions and get the responses back. So a lot of self service is now made easily possible. It cuts down the time to make decisions. They're able to handle those questions by themselves very easily. And many of the human interaction elements like the customer support and help desk and all those activities, people are trying to use a generative AI. We could see a good level of adoption. And you mentioned, Sri, the, the sort of human connection there. So. How are you bridging that gap between the human connection and the generative AI? For a generative AI to work properly, it needs to have good, relevant data available. And two, the pertinent questions have to be there for it to give the right responses. Those things can come in only with people who have the subject knowledge. The human in the loop is very important to make sure that two things. One, the data quality is good. That is very important. The human of the loop has to experiment and validate all the things that goes into the AI space. And two, what are the pertinent questions to ask? That can be given only by subject matter experts. Otherwise, people will ask random questions and they see some very bad responses. So the human of the loop is very critical for an effective AI solution. And I guess one of the key questions, Sri, is, is where do we see this heading both in the short term, but also in the medium term for the real estate sector? The first thing is, AI is expensive, it is not cheap. Especially after coming out of all this tough time periods with all the interest rates higher, people are going to be very cautious on how much to invest and where to invest in AI. So in the short term, people are going to be doing a lot of proof of concepts to see which portion of the business can have a real ROI with AI. And then they will determine what does it take to build a good AI solution for that particular aspect. In the short term, you could see a lot of proof of concepts being tried at different places, but at the same time, it is not like the previous internet time period where nobody cares about profit, they only want to see a lot of adoption level. But in AI, it is going to be a combination of both. Adoption is going to be controlled by the return on the investments of those aspects. And in the medium term, is to focus on building the right data model. What are the data that is necessary so that generative AI is also evolving so that it can get the right results. That is what we are seeing in the CRE space. Now companies are going back. For example, everybody used to complain that they do not have good data in their system. But so far, people have been hesitating to put all their data, compile all their least, bring in all the least data into a particular system so that it can be, become effective on that front. Because it was cost prohibitive, time consuming areas. But now with generative AI, people have a need to say, okay, let's me see how I can bring all those data 
for a, to be very effective for a data a generative AI data model, but at the same time being very cost effective. So that is where we see the trend that is going on. People are trying to be doing a lot of uh, uh, data model building and in a very short span of time. Really interesting to get that short-term and medium outlook for the sector, but also the global perspective. Thanks very much for joining us, Sri. Thank you.